Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Uh, today we are the 13th of February 2024. Around the virtual table we have myself, Damien Duportal, Stéphane Merle, Bruno Verharten, Kevin Martins, and we have a new attendee, Akash Mishra. Uh, please note that Hervé Lemur and Mark Wade are most probably unavailable today, so we're going to start without waiting for them. Let's get started. It's been two weeks. We canceled last week due to the FOSDEM, so a lot of things. First of all, weekly releases. As we had 2.444 and 2.445 releases, um, I don't remember that there has been issues last week with the 2.444. I can't remember which one though. Let me check the history. Do you want a little reminder? Yes, I, I I broke something, sure. Yes, but I you, don't you deleted something that was needed. You know the oh yeah file system. Uh, true that. So failed due to. Uh, let me search the issue. <laughs> uh, get that Jenkins IO. I believe we closed it right after. Which milestone was it? Oh, it wasn't in any milestone? Oh, no. So then let's add to the closed milestone then. <laughs> the, the milestone we are going to close. OK. OK, let me take notes. Due to con unforeseen consequences ah consequences of a file storage was removed during migration to premium storage so what happened is that that issue uh, show that we were using a non premium file storage which is a shared file storage uh, which is baked by um, object storage behind, manage on Azure, and that can provide Samba or NFS multi-write access as a persistent volume to our systems. In that case, forget Jenkins IO, the mirror redirector. That storage was costing us more uh, around two to three K per month, which was so much that we initially think thought about hey let's just move to virtual machine or use a simple ssd that will be clearly cheaper and we realized along the way that in fact we were built by usage as you can see on that uh, on uh, that one if you, you we were using transaction optimized and transaction optimized say hey you are built per snapshot per transactions while in the case of the new one, everything is included, particularly metadata, which means we were able to remove this 3K because the storage cost, even though a bit higher, 0.2 uh, per gigabyte instead of 0.005, so it's fourth time the price for storage, but that's still a total of 200 per month instead of 2K per month, so it's a 10 time decrease. As part of this one, we had to create a brand new premium storage and migrate data. And there were two file storage. One was marked superficially at least as non-use since years. So I deleted it and never migrated it. The data within is already present on archive Jenkins IO and PKG Jenkins IO. And the, the question, hey, what purpose does it serve? The purpose is that that share was used during the Jenkins core release, which broke the last week release. So uh, fixed uh, by recreating the missing file storage, documenting it, and filling it with data from pkg.origin.jenkins.io VM. The goal it's of that... Hervé, because he, he pointed that out uh, during yep, the emergency. Absolutely. So good, good job. Thanks at Hervé and at Mark for handling this release. 
So thanks everyone. So then everything went fine and we didn't have the issue today. We had another issue though. <laughs> so um, today's release, uh, release is out war. Uh, let me see where is, what's the status. The packaging build failed due to an agent go, uh, being deleted. Uh, I believe there was a network issue. Let's have a look at the checks. Okay, it's currently synchronizing with the mirror, so in a few minutes that should be okay. Uh, let's go back to the notes. Packaging job failed due to a network transient error. Started, almost finished. And the Docker image is out. The tag has been created, the release has been created, so we are ready to update uh, Docker-based image for the weekly release. Um, Kevin, I don't know if there is something to run on the changelog for this week. Uh, it's I, I merged it and it's live now, so that that should be all set. Oh, cool! Thanks. So, end of this meeting, everything should be there. Is there any question on the weekly releases, the problem we had last week, this week, or something to add? No? Okay. Do you have something else on the announcement, folks? I don't have either, so let's continue. The next weekly release will happen next week, as usual, Tuesday, 20 February 2024. Uh, that will be 2.446. I don't remember, as usual, the LTS release, 21. Oh, so next week is an LTS week. So be careful next week, folks. Don't break the production. Uh, do we have an announced Jenkins security advisory? None as far as I can tell. So that's a good thing. And next major event, Scalix in March. That's an opportunity for people living on the West Coast to uh, be able to meet uh, uh, some of the Jenkins community team member that will be there, at least uh, Mark, I believe. Mark and Alisa most probably. Is there anything else on the calendar or announcements? No? Okay, let's roll. Uh, at deprecated topic, so let's start with the job we were able to do during the past milestone, which was an exceptional milestone due to the cancellation of last week's build. So it's two week milestone, that's a lot of element we were able to fix. So uh, GitHub topic was added to one of the repository, uh, just to mention, we use the LDS for that, but these are managed by the Jenkins CI GitHub organization administrator, which we are not, but we use the Jenkins Infra desk for that. We had four or four random errors on CI Jenkins IO. Um, so let me regroup the Datadog issue. Uh, we have had an issue uh, with the version 6.0.0 of the Datadog plugin, uh, which corrupted some pay build pages and build data. So we had to update to the 6.0.1, which stopped corrupting data, but was showing quite often stack overflow error requiring a controller restart. Finally, the 6.0.2 version of Datadog was able to stop this stack overflow. So now we are safe. There have been multiple consequences. So, that dog plugin is um, failures. Let me rewrite that. If you have any question while I'm ordering the element, don't hesitate. Nope. Oh. Uh, generate. Um, made controller to corrupt build data during a stack of a flow error. 
fixed by corruption fixed by stack overflow error fixed by 6.0.0 applied everywhere where we use it okay i'm searching for the na okay this one so the one funny the one first funny consequence of this was that all builds on CI Jenkins IO were showing the epoch as the date because the build data was corrupted. So the default value when the Jenkins core loads the build data is 1st January of 97, the epoch. So that one has been fixed. Thanks for the work of uh, Hervé and Mark. They upgraded, they contacted the Datadog maintainer and exchanged. And one of the funny consequences is that we had the random 404 pages because some build had their build data corrupted. After we restarted the controller and the applying the changes, all of these error pages were gone. Finally, we realized with Hervé that uh, the controller logs are not collected on CI Jenkins IO. We willingly disabled that like one year and a half ago and never went back on that area. But since we know that Adog uh, offers and sponsors us with uh, unlimited data, unlimited requests, that's a good opportunity now that we have removed everything sensitive from CI Jenkins. So that was an opportunity for us to start collecting these logs so we can correlate with the logs sent by the Datadog plugin itself. Controller versus build versus agent logs. Um, I'm looking at all the other consequences. I think it's okay, agent are spawning on infra CI. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was there was another unforeseen consequence of that. Incremental publisher application was answering HTTP 400 client error when the builds on the pull request for different plugins were reaching success and were trying to tell the system to deploy the generated incremental builds to the specific repository. Um, the reason is because that one uses CI Jenkins IO as a source of truth. And since the source of truth was an archived artifact of a build, which was corrupted by the Datadog problem, that was a domino effect that killed the service. Guys, an RPU archived artifact, which were corrupted by Datadog. Fixed as RPU run again with success. And CI, the Jenkins does it. Next step, let's start using reports Jenkins IO instead. So there is an issue for me, issue to write at, we started. So the idea is to use like for infra reports and other services, the RPO rep repository permission updater is a job that run on trusted CI, the trusted and private controller, which is able to publish to report Jenkins IO, the JSON file. This these files are public, their content is public, there is nothing sensitive, except the fact that we want this file not to be served by CI Jenkins IO. Instead, reports Jenkins IO is a static web server, a simple one which we can rely and highly available. So we started the work and now the report is generated and served, so we now have to update incremental publisher. For the next release, I will have to write an issue. Is there any question on that topic? Things to add, things unclear. Okay, a note about incremental publisher. Thanks at Hervé and Tim um, for the, the huge amount of work you've put on incremental publisher that has been released at least seven times since the past four days for the incremental service upgrades, a lot of features, bug fix and improvements. Any question? Nope, okay. Um, thanks uh, 
So Alex was able to create, uh, uh, Alex and Hervé were able to create a new category on their desk. So when you open an issue that is related to community Jenkins IO, such as, oh, I've been banned or I have an issue with my uh, discourse account, then it can be um, a, a great help for us to categorize and triage these kind of issues. So thanks, uh, Alex and Hervé. Ah, we don't have, okay. Uh, next one, Community Jenkins IO page view exceed OSS plan. So Alex Brandes, uh, part of the, the Jenkins board member, was uh, so that we were um, crossing some threshold in amount of users and accesses. Looks like it's fixed. I haven't checked in detail, but looks like they contacted uh, Discourse and they were able to increase our plan because they fully sponsor us. So thanks, Discourse, and thanks, Alex, for taking care of this. Same kind of issue on GitHub. The Jenkins CI GitHub organization was consuming too much user seats compared to uh, what was allowed for the sponsored plan. In fact, we are sponsored in an unlimited way. So either it was visual or it was just to contact them so they can increase uh, virtually the, the amount of seats. So that has been closed. So thanks again for the administrator for taking care of this one. Is there any question? Nope, okay. Um, in the top level topic, uh, I'm just adding back the high storage issue. Just a word on uh, get Jenkins IO. Because it created some errors. Hop, here we are. Uh, believe I've added it because that that spinned up that error. So for some users, so that issue is what I mentioned about last week failed uh, release. Some user during one or two hours or even more, uh, saw a 404 when trying to download the latest Jenkins, the weekly release, which was broken due to a, uh, uh, so, caused due to missing file storage. See announcement section. So as we discussed, that has been taken care of by RV. Many thanks for that and Mark. So it was fixed during the same day and now we are back to, we are back to the a new something working. Um, next issue. Is there any question on this topic? Uh, this issue. So some users were blacklisted from uh, Aachen mirror, download mirror. Uh, it's because on uh, another issue that I will let me try age. Some uh, the maintainer uh, that person is one of the maintainers of the Aachen University Mirror that sponsors us by providing a file server that serves as one of the mirror. If you are close to uh, Germany, uh, on network or geographically, most of the time your downloads of Jenkins War or HPI or GPA files comes from that file server. They saw um, let's say unpleasant usages just on a few files old version of old plugin, which looks like someone misconfigured their whole system. So they enable a fail to ban system, which tend to blacklist or API rate limit the downloads when someone is doing an abuse. As a consequence of this, there are some user were misconfiguring their system. They were downloading a lot of plugin and they were falsely considered as a usage ab uh, abuse. So they have, ponderated the rules and everything is back to normal. But that was an opportunity to check that the Jenkins operator to install, it's one of the numerous way to install Jenkins on Kubernetes. And that operator does not allow to provide your custom built image with your plugins, which mean on each Jenkins restart, like the default setting of the Elm chart, Jenkins try to re-download all the plugins. If the plugins are already there, of course, it's only checking that there is no new version, but still that's a lot of downloads. 
So in that case, their user had 25 controllers using the operator and they restarted all at the same time, which was, yes, um, a little peak of download. It's not catastrophic, but still fail to ban consider that as an abuse. So it had to be uh, fine tuned. Uh, the good thing is that that allowed us, um, that clearly allowed us to see, oh, there is an issue with the operator. So the maintainer of the Jenkins operator is working on that feature. And yeah, we know if you run Jenkins on Kubernetes, please disable the download plugin feature and build your own image that will be easier for you. Is there any question? Nope, okay. Next issue. I believe that one is not related to us. And I think, yeah, I think we need to change the status as not planned, sorry. Uh, the user had DNS resol resolution issue and they were redirected to a mirror, which their system wasn't able to get an IP from that name. So it's not something we can control, it's their system. So I'm adding it in the closed as not planned because there is nothing related to, to our work and there is nothing we can do for that user. Any question? Nope, okay, let's continue. So um, as a follow-up of uh, the uh, get Jenkins IO storage change to Promium, which broke the weekly release, uh, that was also an opportunity for us to automate using update CLI and Datadog, two elements. First, since we define infrastructure on one system with Terraform, which define the size of that file storage. And then we specify a reference in Kubernetes management, we have to keep in sync to some elements, such as the size. We want Kubernetes to always be in sync of the size of the real file storage and have the same amount. So that has been automated by Hervé and or Stefan. I don't remember exactly. Them. And we also started to monitor the amount of, uh, of uh, data we use because that volume is never cleaned up, which is what we want. We want unlimited persistence, but we need to be sure that we only pay for what we consume. So we have an intermediate to find. We need to always have less than 80% of disk storage usage, so we can hit best performances of the network system and the, store, uh, the system storage. But we also need to increase the storage when we cross the 80% threshold. As such, uh, we have added a, a probe on Datadog that we alerts us when we reach that threshold. Is there any question or things to add? Nope, okay. Next issue, we had a problem with infra.ci, our private controller, which wasn't able to spin up agent. So thanks, Stefan, for taking care of this one. Uh, may I let you explain in a one sentence <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the yeah. outcome? Um, OK, the problem was with the autoscaler on the node pool, specifically on the IRM node pool. Oh, RM64, and in fact, um, we did start the autoscaler from zero to 10, I think. And the problem was that zero, the Microsoft Azure is um, pushing people to use one and not zero. Uh, so, so for it to, to work, especially when you're using spot instances that take the risk to get killed, and, and then it will not spawn up the one that have been killed and you stay at zero. But if you spawn manually one, then it's working and triggering everything fine. Uh, with a, uh, an issue open with uh, Microsoft, um, they, they did, we did a, a visual and some exchanges and they stick to the fact that we need to, to start at one. Um, we did some math and, and uh, the budget is okay with small spot instances in that case, that was something we can afford. So we did start it at one, but before they closed the, the, the ticket, I told them that we solved the problem by starting at one, but that would be smart if we can start at zero. And if the autoscaler was able to, to spawn up one none when there is none. Nice job, which means now we have way more responsive uh, system for the RM. 
And I will add that thanks to the work we are going to uh, to mention a bit later on migrating everything on ARM64 all in one agent, that had way more efficiency and sense to that choice. Because if all of our jobs are running on the same node pool, the probability to have a pod is uh, uh, at any moment is close to 100%. And yeah. and it's okay because we don't consume an other node pool for that instance. Agreed. Thanks for that work. Um, is there any question on this one? No? Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, we now have a nice API to expose for today the mirror list uh, to our end user. So the list of mirrors. So if you want to allow these IPs or domain name, you can use programmatically because we provide a JSON file, a static JSON file, and that will be amended with if we change these mirrors, if we add more, remove some, and it's automatically generated. Click on Stephen. the link at the bottom to show them. Yeah. Cool, I was going, hey, Stefan, do you want to, <laughs> to guide me? Uh, where's the link? Uh, Hervé did put it uh, up, up here. Yeah. yeah. So it's versioned, of course, and as you can see, we have one mirror, which is the fallback. Uh oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> we are in the middle of a release, so there might be uh, something going wrong. I'm not sure what is the reference. Oh, there is a bug on the system. You, you know, two weeks ago, I was saying everything was fine with the release, and in fact, it was not. So. Yep. OK. So <laughs> reopen the issue. We can reopen and add it to the new milestone. That's that's what I did two weeks ago. Uh, live effect, always good. <laughs> See, okay. Seen during team meeting, the list of mirrors only shows the fallback. Um, here we are. But you get the idea. That's a nice service. I'm now sorry, Hervé. I'm sorry. Each time, each time we open that, we have to reopen the issue. Okay, so let's amend on the notes and add it in work in progress. Um, deploy deploys a mirrors meta two. What is the issue? Ah, let me get the link though. Okay, but there still is a, an unexpected bug. List is empty except for fallback. Okay. Is there any other question on this one? I will say it's still great job because we have an automation system that we will be able now to use as a foundation to increase the amount of public information to provide as meta API. Like GitHub provide their own public API. So we'll be able to have our public outbound API, etc. That would be awesome one day. One day, one day. Step by step. Yeah. Uh, one last item. Um, that's just something we did a few months ago. Um, see you, Bruno. Uh, since we changed the fallback of these mirrors to Archives Jenkins IO, that solved the issue, a long running issue of a user who was using a tool on a um, uh, Red Hat environment named Red Hat Satellites. And that system was scanning everything and trying to download all the packages to create their own private network. The problem is that the former uh, fallback system, OSU OSL servers, uh, did not add all the data. They had, a, um, they had a garbage collect system that was deleting older artifacts that were more than three or four years. So that's why, since we were able to change archive, Jenkins IO to Digital Ocean, and we have the bandwidth, we define archives as something where we have all the artifacts we ever had been, and as a fallback for download. So if you are trying to get an old file, the mirror system will redirect you to that fallback, which solve 
effectively the issue of that user. So I closed it. Any question? I'm sorry, just I'm not sure. Maybe I should shut up. Uh, no, is the, the fallback is not up to date all the time. We still need to solve that problem, no? Uh, it's up to date after a 30 minute max. Yes, we still got that gap. Okay, good. Exactly. But since the year, the problem was for old files. It's already up to date since years. It's old only files for the are good. New, new files, 30 minutes gap. Yes. Exactly. Got it. But good point. Okay, I think that's all for the closed issue. We had a few issues closed as not planned. Most, pro uh, most of the time, it's either a user facing issue, user opening an help desk for their own Jenkins installation, which is not our job to, to manage. Uh, most of the time, they have to be redirected to community Jenkins IO politely because there is nothing we can do to help them. The community is way more efficient than us for uh, answering their issues. Finally, we have account issues that were uh, never answered as usual, so we closed them. Any question on the close as not planned? Okay, so now work in progress. Um, so we seen the download mirror, so there is an issue to be fixed, um, at least analyze. Uh, Stefan, I may help uh, if you want. Uh, I mean, we can all uh, get this one. We'll see uh, later how do we uh, dispatch the work once survey will be back. Is that okay for you for this one? Yes, with pleasure. Cool. Uh, then thanks uh, Alex and Mark for taking care of the Jira updates. Uh, so that consists on opening an issue for the Linux Foundation as they manage a Jira instance for us. And like we did uh, last year, every year we have an LTS upgrade to to have uh, because 9.4.x baseline will be end of life in November or October this year. And the change to the latest LTS on the 9 uh, uh, line. So nothing to say here. Um, waiting for LF to give us an operation date. Nothing for us uh, here and we will manage this. Any question? Uh, then unexpected delays building small plugin on Linux agent. That's a long running issue. Some agents uh, were, uh, when spawned on DigitalOcean, had trouble when downloading issue from our caching proxy. Uh, we disabled the usage of DigitalOcean. And right now, uh, we consider that we need to start upgrading to Kubernetes 1.27. Usually, that kind of uh, trouble happened a trimest, uh, one trimester before digital ascent drop a given Kubernetes line. End of February marks the end of the support for Kubernetes 1.26 on digital ocean. As such, that's why we think migrating to 1.27 will clean up the virtual machine, the cluster, and will most probably solve the performance issue. If not, then we will have to diagnose and eventually change the way we use digital ocean. Require Kubernetes.27. See below in new items. I plan this upgrade during the this. Hmm. We will add it on next milestone uh, after covering the current in progress. Is yeah. that okay for you? Yes. Digital Ocean Kubernetes agent are still disabled on CI Jenkins IO. Uh, not important one, I tried to update the GNLP argument as arguments as pointed by Basil, uh, because we are using deprecated forms of some arguments or deprecated, but still functional. Um, failed or Azure VM, uh, need to investigate. Um, I've seen different possibility and errors, but uh, we need to check what is uh, the agent the virtual machine are created, but the agent fails to connect back to the controllers. On both cases, uh, when we have containers and when we have virtual machine, both Windows and Linux. This Azure containers, both Linux and Windows. So need to investigate on an offline scenario to not break the production. 
So uh, if, unless someone wants to play with this, uh, I'm continuing my work here. No question? Uh, open VPN uh, revoke. Uh, nothing done here. Let's check if we can diagnose this this week or we will drop it. Uh, that's about revoking OpenVPN certificate. Most probably there is documentation built by Olivier Vernin, but I need to, someone need to check. Uh, Hervé did the first superficial check and wasn't able to find something obvious, which means we might have uh, missing things here around revoking former uh, certificate. We can revoke one person certificate if we want to get rid of that person from, uh, from the VPN access. But revoking whole certificates can still be a problem. So gotta gotta check and try uh, with the local installation to see. Most probably we need uh, we need to use a CRM. Most probably here, but it is a question of scope. We can revoke a user, but can we revoke? former cert of a valid user easily. No question? Nope, okay. Thanks for the person editing my notes. <laughs> that helps a lot. Uh, versioning docs Jenkins IO. So check with survey yesterday. Um, need to continue working on this one. On this one. Post post them. That was not the top priority, and that part uh, being somewhere. I know some tiny things were done, but uh, yeah, some work need to be uh, to be applied, and every was missing time due to the first them. Is there anything else to add on your side, uh, Kevin, on that one? No, nope, nothing to add there. Just working on some issues and stuff that we found. Cool. Thanks. Um, uplink, we still have uh, still um, uh, corrupted database records. Uh, we have a slow running request currently running. Request running to find them all, but that takes 20 to 40 hours to do the dichotomy. So that takes time. So once a day, one request a day keeps the corruption away. <laughs> Uh, continuing working on this one. Um, we have an effect each time we remove a corrupted network, we just have 10 to 20 compared to the hundred of billions records on that database. So we just remove 10 to 20 records and that solved the issue and then the, the seek and find continue. So now we're able to download three megabyte of logs. Initially we were only uh, blocked at two, 200K and it's only on 24 and 25 December of last year. Christmas gift, yeah. If you have data to find on other days, that's fine. Just these two days are corrupted. So as discussed with Daniel, maybe that should be okay, but I would want to remove the corruption. We are still not able to understand why these records were corrupted. Though. No logs uh, are available on Microsoft PostgreSQL uh, site. No question? Oh, okay, next item. Intermittent out of memory Java 21 builds. Uh, nothing done, still need to be investigated. Still need to be investigated. Not sure uh, why, maybe it was fixed, maybe it was development, maybe it's on the infrastructure. We need to investigate that one. Most probably we'll see that coming in a with more priority when we will start the uh, the switch to GDK21 for controller and agent. But right now it's GDK21 for builds. So it's different concerns and different usage. Um, next one is on me, migration leftover from public gates to RM64. So next step, next step is LDAP. Need to plan migration of persistent data 
as ARM64 VMs are in a different AZ availability zone than x86. So that means we need to migrate the data volume to a new one, which will be multi-availability zone replicated. The cost overhead is close to nothing, but we need a migration. To a geo a zone replicated persistent volume, and then migrate LDAP to RM64. The image is working already on RM64, so uh, the data is the, is the problem here. Next candidate then, key clock. And still no news from mirror bit maintainer. I try to catch Jean-Baptiste Kampf uh, at the FOSDEM, but didn't have, I wasn't successful to get his attention and there were too much people around him. So no news, we will ping them uh, because uh, one of the solution for us will be to fork and maintain our own fork of mirror orbits. Given no commits are done here, we will be more efficient on maintaining our own copy of this system. That also includes challenging the usage of mirror orbits in the future as well. <coughs> there are other solutions from the SUSE world and uh, open source is a good thing. So let's see. We, are, we already have enough work right now. Stefan, can you explain what's the status on Infra CI Jenkins IO migration to RM64? Yes, I'm fighting with, uh, I think, the last uh, image, which is Bundler. Um, sorry, it's not Bundler, the name of the image. It's, uh, I forgot that name. But, Ruby. I'm, yeah, there's Bundler. Ruby inside because it's, it's installing uh, Bundler. And uh, and right now that's a nightmare. But I think that Hervé uh, point uh, my problem with another within another issue, and that problem was uh, related to um, uh, the path for ASDF, ASDF, sorry, and uh, and in fact we were using variable, and those variables were not interpolated. So we had to fight, and the whole team had to fight for the regex instead to uh, manage a way for the path to be updated correctly. Um, but uh, still a work in progress. The last build worked almost everywhere except on Windows. So I, I launched another build because most of the time with Windows, that's just a flaky uh, issue and, and that's not related because we didn't install that on on Windows. So I think for that part at least it's 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 going in a good way. Nice. I believe uh, the next candidates after infra reports will be uh, other consumers of the Docker builder yes. image, which is the one you try to that, migrate that's the name. In exactly. One. And our Puppet system, uh, I think Puppet will be first in line <laughs> soon enough. But yeah, cool. And Puppet, um, we need to update it too. Reminder, so. long term, uh, spin up a new AKS cluster only for infra.ci agents on the Azure sponsored subscription. The goal will be to uh, to separate controller and agent like we do with CI Jenkins IO, and we will pay for the agent uh, on the new system. Since <laughs> we won't have spots available, I haven't had any answer. I need to re-request a third time. Uh, we will be able to scale to zero. <laughs> Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> any question on this one? Okay, as a reminder, I had to check with the CDF the cost last week in details. And that, that work on RM64 uh, has been proven to, to be a gain of 5 to 7% on the last two last month uh, builds on Azure. So thanks. Uh, an old issue, which was consecutive. Uh, so. Let me get back to get Jenkins IO. Cause 
okay, we are. So still that uh, file storage migration to Chromium system related to. So now we have used a primum file storage. We see improve, uh, improve times on loading the list of previous releases. When you go to Jenkins IO, you go to download and you see, you want to see the list of all the former weekly downloads. That request is a slow request on the file storage because it's using Samba on a, on a system which is back, baked by object storage. And listing content of a container, of a file container inside this kind of storages is not an efficient operation unless you do some tricks. There were two solutions. Uh, the first one tried NFS version four, Chromium only, because now, right now it's uh, NFS 3.1 if we want to use NFS, which is not the case. Instead of CFS in the AKS CSI driver, but failed on the two first attempts. So even following, there were a permission issue. I'm not sure which one how. So I focused on migrating the, the to the premium file storage, but that could be an improvement because NFS v4 with the proper client side tuning on the on the CSI driver might help on that area. But not sure. I cannot be sure. Because uh, still the backend system are not directly disks. You have a file st um, you have an intermediate system object storage. However, Hervé emitted um, raised a long running question also raised by Mark two years ago. Why not generating these HTML pages on each core release? I mean, that's a static page that lists the list of existing releases. So if when we do a weekly or an LTS release, a core release in general, we regenerate that page and copy that file on the mirror system and we're done. That could be also redirected to Jenkins IO. There are multiple solutions here. So Hervé had that issue, uh, had that proposal raised by Mark a few years ago. Uh, Kevin, there is no expectation here, but I'm mentioning this because that could be something we can do on Jenkins IO. Either update CLI could help automate that. There are at least four different ways of doing it. It used to be done by Olivier uh, four or five years ago. I think Tim was there and worked with him on that uh, element if needed. That's really ancient history. During the generation, they were spinning up a Docker container with Apache within serving the files. They did the slow request one time and curl exported the HTML file, which then they deployed to the, to the production. So that could be as simple as this one. I believe Hervé will be really interested in driving this, but I don't want to speak on his behalf, so I will let him confirm until next week. So I'm gonna keep that issue on the milestone and if we don't have time or if Hervé is not interested, it will go back to our somewhere lost in our backlog. Any question? OK, next one, which is the most important and most blocking one. We want to replace blob xfer and by az copy. That one is blocking update center migration and it was creating a lot of additional uh, network requests to the file storage. Hopefully we don't have the transaction problem anymore. Still that will improve the performances and the security of how we manage credential for writing to this file storage. Good news, Hervé was able to find a way to generate short-lived SAS token using Azure Service Principle. So that's a lot of big words to say, hey, he was able to say with an account which credential don't need to be renewed every month, when we need to deploy files, we can generate a token, a short-lived token that allow the builds copying files for one hour to copy or read files on these systems which is really useful because we don't have to manage that credential and that credential, if exposed, will be invalid automatically in one hour maximum. 
so that protect us and without avoid without having us to renew every month or three months the tokens. That's really interesting. And in the future, we could use Azure instance identity, which is the same thing as a service principle. Instead, it doesn't have any credential at all inside Jenkins. And instead, it's authenticated by Azure Cloud based on the instance, either container or virtual machine, if it has the permissions. So we have numerous ways here. So next step, next steps. Um, so right now, work in progress on contributors, contributors.jenkins.io. Next step, updates Jenkins.io, which is the new update center system, and the others, if it work, uh, if it work. Long term, pkg.origin.jenkins.io virtual machine. So that will be after the next steps. That machine is using Blobix for every five minutes to synchronize the metadata of the update center. So we'll need to use AZ copy instead. Any question? So immediately I can write blocks, the update center evaluation. We have asked the Jenkins security team for review, but we need to migrate uh, that update Jenkins IO to a new premium storage with that new token system. So right now it's blocked by finishing the blob X for easy copy task. Okay for everyone. Um, finally, Hervé broke back an old issue. We have a lot of jobs where we want to have two pipelines for a given project. One pipeline is the the project itself, and the second pipeline is update CLI, like we do on GitHub. We used to do on GitHub Actions, and the goal is to have to separate jobs, so we want to split them. So if update CLI fails, it doesn't block the main pipeline, and it also easier to use the graph viewer, because otherwise, for instead on our Terraform uh, jobs, it breaks the graph view, and that's really hard for us to use on day to day. So by separating concern, different jobs for the given project, that solved it, that issue. Um, was making usage of graph view out for us. Terraform, Packer, and Kubernetes uh, yeah, no, And Packer jobs on infra CI. Long running task. We have a lot of jobs to cover and we are missing automation. So one or two jobs max per week and we do this on the long term. WIP currently is on Azure and Packer. Uh, Azure job uh, has been created for update CLI. Now we need to uh, run every task and split the pipelines. Any question on this one? Okay, perfect. Now, new issues. Stefan, you can start with Kubernetes. Yes, I I plan to uh, start at least with the DigitalOcean upgrade. Um, as there is not really any risk, we don't we disabled it, the both of them because we have two clusters, one for the ACP which is public and one for the the agents and both of them are not used. So I uh, will, uh, uh, <clears throat> pardon, sorry, uh, do the, the upgrade during that uh, milestone. And that's good because they, yes, they are the first one to end this uh, old version 1.26. For... Kubectl, ah. And digital ocean clusters as not used risk is zero. Yes, and then I discovered that the version uh, used for the client on the all-in-one uh, agent was not uh, correct, so that was a double uh, effect for the upgrade. Nice one. Question on how all-in-one. Mage 
well incorrect text thanks to this nice and next candidate IWS EKS clusters yeah we'll let this one to Kevin <laughs> oh we have the Azure production cluster easier you just click on a button and you wait for everything to be read and that's okay. <laughs> and then you bl you blame the network always always blame the network no usually you, you blame the DNS or the regex yeah regex is also a good candidate to be blamed okay uh, so uh, we remove triage. I will add the required label later. Do we have other triage issue? Yes. Uh, Golang version management, we need to improve the way we manage it. Right now, we track version of Golangs, but we track based on the latest available, right? Here we are. Let me add the topic. So, Stefan, I let you continue explaining uh, what this issue is, uh, is about. I need to remember. Uh, we need to match the same version of Golang between uh, the one in the in the all-in-one uh, image and uh, where well, we use it. So the shared tools, uh, the the shared pipeline library, and the shared tools. So we 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 cannot have the last one in the in one side and and an old one on the other one. So we need to provide the same one at the same time. Production. Okay, today it's hard for me. Um, otherwise, otherwise, we break builds for shared tools and open VPN when upgrading. Image. Oh, we stop upgrading, and that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um. For that one, I don't mind to help. I will let you uh, uh, drive since I see you have assigned yourself, Stefan. Uh, maybe, maybe I didn't assign myself. Maybe you did. No, I don't know. Nope, self assigned. <laughs> Five days ago, I was I was uh, sick. Something. Audit, don't lie. <laughs> uh, as a reminder, we already do that kind of trick for tracking the Jenkins tool version of Maven for the installer. We have an update CLI uh, manifest with two sources. The first source is get the version of the all-in-one image we have in production today, which is this one. That's literally the production. And from this, you go to the Packer image repository source for that specific tagged version, which is in production, and you list the tools version YAML file. Then with a request on the, in that case, Maven version. So in your case, in the Golang version, you will be able to get what Golang version is currently used in production. I think we have uh, the, the same kind of, of uh, update CLI manifest for the version of uh, agents within the, um, the GCASC definition for, for Absolutely, instance. absolutely. So that's the same pattern, which means once we have upgraded Golang on the all-in-one image, then all the project using Golang and updating Golang will then use that kind of trick to say, oh, I see a new version, then let's try to update the Golang dependencies based on what we have in production. So the, the Packer one is the, the truth? Absolutely. So I'm adding this on the next milestone. Um, I think I saw one last triage issue. Add the new private Kubernetes in the new sponsored. Oh, <laughs> that one is for Stefan. He already did the trick. Hey, Stefan, you already wrote the issue for the new cluster for uh, for Infra CI. Yes. I forgot. Um, we had I walk issue. sometimes. Are you? A, what are you? What? What do you mean? So let me add the reference here. Let's see. Okay, I've added it to the next milestone. Is that okay for you? Yeah. Why not? And finally, we have one last triage issue. 
Oh, I need to diagnose. Okay, that one. Need to diagnose. Plausible. And we have added the new cluster. Uh, I'm adding myself uh, on the new cluster, if it's okay for you, Stefan. No, it's okay. Um, I'm ascending myself and I will uh, fish you and say, hey, come work with me. Is that okay for you? Yes. Can I can I do the same with Kevin? <laughs> fish Kevin too. If, if he's okay, yes, I don't mind. I'll work with you, Stefan. No worries there. Cool. There, there is a problem with that indentation. Yep. No worries. It work. I think that's all for the issues. Uh, <laughs> I don't see new issues. Um, let's remove trade from this one. And add it to the milestone. Good. Is there new issues or thing you want to to discuss concerns or whatever? I don't see any. Okay. Is there any question or topic you want to bring to that meeting? Nope. Akash, do you have any question before we close? Nope, thank you. So then we'll see each other next week. Once the recording will be available, I will publish them on YouTube and the one from the previous meeting as well. And I hope you will, and I wish you everyone a nice end of week. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.